So for those of you that like instructions, lists of do this, here it is. To predict molecular geometries, draw the Lewis structure. Determine the total number of electron groups. Determine the number of bonding groups and the number of lone pairs. And this is where I think the book's instructions are pretty dumb. Refer to table 10.1. Well, that's nice when you're doing your homework, but I'm not going to give you that table on a test. No, I'm not. So this is what you do. Think about how balloons would arrange themselves and imagine that the lone pairs are invisible balloons. It's not that hard. I know you're messing with me. I'm messing you with you back, right? Doing this is a very important skill to have if you need to take organic chemistry. It is really important to be able to predict bond angles in, in molecular geometries like this. So let's do an example. Predict the molecular geometry and bond angle of ClNO. What's the first thing we have to do? Lewis structure. So the way this molecule is written um, is telling me that the nitrogen should be in the middle. So chlorine, nitrogen, oxygen. And then we have to look at how many electrons do we have. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Nitrogen has five. Oxygen has six. So we've got 18, right? So I already have two, four electrons. So I'll go 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Ran out of electrons. So we need to make a double bond. Well, let's, let's think about this so that we end up with not having to rearrange things due to formal charges. How many bonds does chlorine like to make? One. How many bonds does nitrogen like to make? Three. And oxygen? Two. So if I put a double bond here, they'll all get the number of bonds that they want. So I'm going to take one of these lone pairs from oxygen and make a double bond here. Now I've got octets on all my atoms. And if I calculate formal charges, they'll all be zero. So that's probably the correct Lewis structure. Yes? How do you know which one likes how many amount of bonds? That's a good question. OK, so the way you can predict the number of bonds an atom will typically form is by looking at the Lewis structure for the element. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. So if I follow the rules and put those around, pairing up as needed, I have one unpaired electron. That tells me that chlorine is probably going to share this electron in one bond with something else. But oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, valence electrons. It has two that aren't paired up. It can make a bond with this one and it can make a bond with that one. Oxygen likes to make two bonds. And you can do that with nitrogen and with carbon, and you'll see that, that it matches up that way. And it's not really a trick. Um, when they do that, they end up with zero formal charges. They don't always do that. Nitrogen can make four bonds, but usually it makes three. OK? So we drew the Lewis structure. We're trying to find the molecular geometry. What do we do next? Number of electron groups on the central atom. How many? Three. There's a single bond, a lone pair, and a double bond. Three electron groups, E-G for electron groups. How do three balloons get away from each other? They make a triangle, right? And in a triangle, what are the angles? They're going to all be 120. So electron geometry is trigonal planar. We're not done yet. Yeah, the lone, the lone pair is a bully, right? So one of these is a lone pair. So 
if I make this the lone pair, what's it going to do to this angle? Squish it. So that's going to be less, ooh, that was way too big, less than 120. Can we predict how much? Not really. Yeah, who cares? Exactly, right? If you care that much, you can go look it up. But we don't care that much. But I want you to be able to predict that that angle is going to be less than 120 because this lone pair is repulsive. So this is trigonal planar electron geometry. What's the molecular geometry? Bent. bent. So the answer is bent, and the angle is less than 120 degrees. It asks for molecular geometry and bond <coughs> angle. Yes? Which one was the trigonal planar and the bent? The bent is the molecular geometry. So when we make that invisible, when this becomes invisible, what we've got left is called bent. That's the molecular geometry. But the molecular geometry is bent because of the lone pair. If the lone pair wasn't there, it would be linear. So electron geometry is trigonal planar. Molecular geometry is bent. Yes? Yeah, so this, this would be, well, maybe I'll do this. I'll do this. this is nitrogen. That's oxygen. And this is chlorine. And then we should you know, put our double bond in there. Oops. Between the correct, correct atoms. <coughs> mm -hmm. Always 120 regardless of the atoms and regardless of the number of electrons on the outside that are not bonded. The, the electrons, these electrons on chlorine have no effect on the molecular geometry. These, these don't. It's only the ones on the central atom. Now, the ideal angle for trigonal planar is 120 because you've got three things. And you take a 360-degree circle, you cut it into three wedges, equal size, or 120. And then you have to look and see, well, are these guys different? Yeah, there's some differences. We've got a double bond here, and we've got the lone pair. The lone pair is the biggest impact. And so it's going to squish these guys together. So that's how we can say it's less than 120. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a good question. Would this angle be bigger or smaller than this angle? Um, um, I don't know if that could actually be measured. Um, you could say, well, this is a double bond, that's a single bond, so I'd expect that this would be a little bit bigger than that one, but we really don't care. I mean, I know some of you don't care about any of this, but I don't care about that angle. Any other questions? Let's do one more. I3 minus. So we have to start with a Lewis structure. And uh, there's not really a choice. You just have to stick the three iodines in a row, right? Um, number of valence electrons, well, we've got three iodines each um, seven, and the minus one charge says we have to add one. So that's going to get us 22 electrons. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Where should I put those extra two? Probably in the central atom. Can iodine handle an expanded octet? Sure you can. And then just to be complete with our Lewis structure, brackets and a negative sign. How many groups around the central atom? Five. Five groups. So five groups makes what shape? 
trigonal bipyramid. Okay, so electron geometry, trigonal bipyramid. So now, where do we put the lone pairs? Equatorial. We want to put them where there's more room. They're going to go in here. So this is going to become lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. Three lone pairs. One, two, three. So linear. Yeah, just looking at what's left, it's going to be linear. So the electron geometry is trigonal by pyramid, but the molecular geometry is linear. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. I know I said that who cares about the, the actual angles and everything, mm -hmm. but is there, like in organic chemistry and biochemistry, where it does make a difference? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of those bond angles make a big difference. Yeah. There are times when people care very much about the bond angles. <coughs> Any other questions? Um, this is the, the book going over um, how to show molecular geometries on paper. And it's, it's the hatched wedge or the dashed wedge going behind, solid wedge coming out. Um, I kind of already went over that. How far do we have to go here? Okay, let's, we gotta, let's just finish it. Okay, so somebody asked earlier about what about the larger molecules? Well, they've got more than one interior atom. You look at each interior atom and decide on the geometry. So here's our example. So this is more complicated, right? So this nitrogen is an interior atom. This carbon, this carbon, and this oxygen are all interior atoms. This oxygen is terminal. It's only bonded to one other atom. It doesn't have any other atoms bonded to it. So the interior atoms are bonded to two or more other atoms. Here is, th this is glycine, by the way. It's an amino acid. Here's our Lewis structure. So we look at this nitrogen, and we ask ourselves, how many groups? Four groups. Four groups, one lone pair. So that's trigonal pyramid. On this carbon, we have four groups, no lone pairs, tetrahedral. On this carbon, we have three groups, trigonal planar. On the oxygen, we have four groups. Two of them are lone pairs. Four groups make a tetrahedron. Two of them are invisible, and so the molecular geometry is bent. But like this, this bond between the nitrogen and carbon, there's rotation around that. And so these hydrogens could be like spinning around they could be in this position, or you could twist them around and have them be up. This hydrogen could be down here. You could twist it up and have it up here, and they can move like that. So let's do this example. Predict the geometry around each interior atom in acetic acid and make a sketch of the molecule. That's really the hard thing. Well, they gave us this skeleton structure but um, I'm just going, well, maybe I won't do that. So we'll do this over here. So we've got carbon to carbon, double bond to oxygen, double bond to oxygen, <coughs> single bond to oxygen over here. And then we've got this hydrogen. So this hydrogen's over here. And then this carbon has three hydrogens on it. We're running over in lecture because of the trouble with the balloons. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the lone pairs in here. And if you want to know why, uh, you can't figure it out, ask me later. So what's the geometry around this carbon atom? Tetrahedral. tetrahedral. So this is tetrahedral. And the other carbon atom? 
trigonal planar. This is trigonal planar because there's three groups. We'll call him TP. And what about that guy? Bent. Bent. Now, when you try to draw this, make it easier on yourself and get as many things in a plane as you possibly can. So I'm going to start with that trigonal planar one in the middle. So there's my carbon. And here's the double bond to the oxygen. Here's another oxygen. And here's the carbon. I drew it like this because these need to be roughly 120 degree angles. This one will probably be a little smaller. And then this guy is tetrahedral. So here I've got the carbon in the plane and this hydrogen in the plane. And then I've got two more, one coming out and one going back. And then for this oxygen over here, I can make that hydrogen also in the plane. So the carbon, the oxygens, this hydrogen, these can all lie flat in a plane, and one of these hydrogens can, but these hydrogens are going to stick out, one above and one below. You can see it. Awesome. We can make a model of this in lab if, if you want to see that. Okay. How do you actually know what? That they take on these shapes? Um, we have experimental evidence for the shapes. Do we do any of this here? Um, no, we don't do any of this here. Not in this. Well, we don't really do any research here, so no, we don't. <laughs> 